good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast. In order to save Artsakh, we must protect international law without restriction. The 21st Zoom of the election campaign of the candidates to the National Assembly of Western Armenia. Sons of Western Armenia, Manasakan Avetisian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. Britain should raise the issue of the blockade of the Berzo Road at the UN Security Council. Lord Alton, Aliyev's deliberate campaign of ethnic cleansing in Artsakh is unfolding before our eyes. Congressman Frank Pallon, Armenian national team leads European U18 Chess Championship. On the eve of the centenary of the legally invalid Treaty of Laws and the situation in Asia Minor and the Middle East is in turmoil. It's true that on internet sites, historical study platforms, in the opinion of historians themselves and even in large-scale propaganda, Lausanne is said to have replaced the Treaty of Sever. This question is not only a legal one. The Treaty of Lausanne can be traced back to the government of Western Armenia, which began its formation in December 1917, parallel to the liberation of Cilicia, when Prosh, Prosian, and Vahanterian, after once again meeting with Stepan Shahumyan, formed the first government of the so called Turkish Western Armenia. From the Yerzenga Armistice and the Mudros Armistice to the arbitral award of November 28, 1920, the question of Armenian independence became a matter of international law. After Boros Nubar Pasha presented the memorandum to the Versailles Peace Conference and formed the government on May 15, 1990, he obtained de facto official recognition from the Allies. This recognition was also achieved through Boros Nubar's efforts with the formation of the Government of Integral Armenia, a continuation of the State of Armenia recognized in 1920, which had gained its independence from Russia on December 11, 1917. Armenia on the territory of internationally de facto Western Armenia was recognized on January 19, 1920, in the following terms. On the basis of this governmental formation on January 27, 1920, the General Secretariat of the Peace conference notified the chairman of the Armenian national delegation that in its session of January 1990-20 the Supreme Council had taken the following two decisions. First, that the government of Western Armenian state shall be recognized as a de facto government. Second, that this recognition does not prejudge the question of the possible borders of this state. Artsakh, Nahijevan, Javak, Silicia and of course Western Armenia were part of the state of Armenia. After Armenia had been recognized de facto on January 1990 2020, Armenia was recognized de jure on May 11, 1920, including by the USA. It was decided that the capital of the Armenian state would be Erzurum, Garin. The Supreme Council transmitted the Treaty of Sever for signature to Turkey, which had one month to submit its counter proposals. On July 27, 2023, the 21st Zoom meeting of the election campaign of the candidates for the National Assembly of Western Armenia took place. The theme of the meeting was culture and Western Armenia. President Armenak Abrahamian, accompanied by Kur Mihir Haikazun, wanted to use this meeting to present to the candidates and guests the foundation of the ancestral culture of the Armenians of Western Armenia. At the Zoom meeting, Kur Mihir Haikazun presented the Haik teaching, also known as the Sun Cult. He explained the semantic meaning of the word deeds, which is the secret of light. He specifically mentioned deeds or light is in man, and man himself is considered a creator. That's why some worshippers don't have a prayer, because they are men and don't need to ask or beg. Our hero Munatsa Kanavetisian became one of the symbols of the war as he rose to a post of combat duty before the enemy unleashed a full-scale war in Artsakh. When the call of battle fire came from the observation post, he understood that the enemy had attacked. It took just a few minutes for Munatsa Kanavetisian's squad to activate the artillery, take control and dictate the situation to the enemy. The battery commander doesn't forget any of the soldiers. He remembers meeting the journalists under the heat of the fire. In the report sent from the front line, the boys with broken voices are the ones who transferred strength and spirit from the front to the rear. Manatsakan Navetisian was born in Aparan, his father an army reserve officer. They all grew up with songs dedicated to heroic struggle, which also influenced their choice of a military profession. At the military college, they were taught to overcome all difficulties, even physical ones, with spirit and willpower. 
It's worth noting that in the year of persecution 1928, Avram Galanti, a Jew living in Western Armenia, published a book entitled Compatriot Speak Turkish, which at first glance misleads researchers and readers alike. However, from the very first page of the book, it is clear that Galanti, a representative of the religious minority, is not criticizing this nationalist initiative, but on the contrary praising the Turkish authorities and calling on them to speak Turkish and forget their mother tongue. This book was published in 1928 in Ottoman and in 2000 it was translated into Latin and published with a preface by the Jewish scholar Rafat Bali. Incidentally, Bali lightly criticizes his relative in the book's preface while drawing a remarkable parallel with the fact that in the same year 1928 another Jew, the nationalist Tekinal, published a book entitled Turkastum, where he called and preached for Jews to adopt the Turkish language, culture and assimilation. According to Bali, with his book Avram Galanti try to protect the Jewish community from attacks by the press and nationalist society on the one hand and to present the reasons why Jews speak little or poorly Turkish on the other hand. Additionally, like taking up, he preached to the Jews of Turkey to learn and use Turkish quickly. However, Avram Galanti was guided more by the ideology of the conscious Turkification of the Jews than by an effort to keep the Jewish community out of danger. Moreover, in this little book, which is far from scientific, objective and some Sometimes even logically, he fanatically advocates the oblivion of all languages spoken in Turkey and the exclusive use of Turkish. This so-called legal formulation of the compatriot Paul Turk action can be considered in 1937. On December 27, PPA deputy Sabri Toprak submitted a bill entitled "On the Prohibition of Those Who Use a Foreign Language Instead of the Turkish National Language" to Parliament, according to which it was forbidden to use a language other than Turkish in public places. According to the first article of this draft, citizens of Constantinople could use languages other than Turkish only at home, and the use of the mother tongue even when communicating with family members outside the home should be punished. The punishment ranged from 24 hours to one week, or with a fine of 10 lire to 100 lire. This legislative project also involved the creation of a large army of whistleblowers who would inform the authorities about outlaws. What's more, the law stipulated that those convicted under this article would not be able to work as teachers, lawyers or journalists and their diplomas would be revoked. While it is true that this legislative initiative did not receive the jure legal status de facto, many of its provisions were implemented. British politician and member of the House of Lords, Lord David Alton, shared the concerns of the International Committee of the Red Cross regarding the blockade of the Berzo Road. Lord Alton considers it necessary that the issue of the blockade of the Berzo Road be discussed at the UN Security Council. The International Committee of the Red Cross is concerned that humanitarian aid is not reaching the Armenians in Artsakh. Britain should immediately raise this issue at the UN Security Council, he wrote on Twitter. Lord Alton also shared on his page the ICRC latest statement on the Berzo Road blog. U.S. Congressman Frank Palun addressed the current situation in Artsakh in his Twitter microblog. Aliyev's deliberate campaign of ethnic cleansing in Artsakh is unfolding before our very eyes. The State Department and the international community should clarify that this is unacceptable and apply sanctions, wrote the congressman. The official also stressed that the disruption of the border opening would now lead to an unacceptable humanitarian crisis. In the fourth round of the under-18 European Chess Championship held in Romania, the Armenian team beat the German team with a score of 2 pound 5. 1 pound 5, Emino Hanyan and Arsene Daftian won. Robert Filipoisian played a draw and Alex Sahakian lost. After three wins and one draw, the Armenian team leads the tournament standing with 17 points. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Oh, 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 oh,